Hey, so the April 8th, 2024 eclipse has had quite the buzz surrounding it. And um, there's quite a bit of rumors going around about it, quite a bit of predictions going around about it. We have our own prediction, by the way. Yeah, we're gonna address a bunch of the questions. A lot of people are asking us why we didn't bring up certain things, or did we know about this, or the world's gonna end, and the rapture's happening, and the it's all pointing to this, and and they're bringing up the red heifer, they're bringing up the Madrid um, fault line, they're bringing up a lot of things connected to this eclipse that we're going to dive in and answer. So uh, we have more information on these subjects, so um, tune in and, and enjoy. First, let's address this, Jim. People are talking about the eclipse, but they're not talking about this. The sun and the moon are not aligned on April 8th. They are in Pisces. Right now, if you go to your Skyview app, and you push forward to April 8th, plug it in, it will show you that the sun and the moon are in Pisces. They are not aligned. They are sitting beside each other, but they are not aligned. How is that possible? Because the sun and the moon have been out of place since back in September 2023. I've been doing these videos telling you that the sun is not where it should be. People are telling me it's the calendar. The calendar's off. Don't worry about it. It's where the sun is in the sky that's different. It's not where it should be. This eclipse is showing you that I am telling you the truth. Because if we see an eclipse on April 8th, how is that possible? If the sun and the moon are in Pisces, it can't be an Aries eclipse, right? If the sun is in Pisces. And if the sun and the moon are not aligned, they have to be aligned in order for you to see an eclipse, correct? So I don't have to be a fucking astrophysicist to understand this, and neither do you. I'm trying to get this out to as many people as I can. Please share this because. Processional slippage, my dear. Um, also known as the procession of the equinoxes. It's been since the time of Jesus, since um, the sun was properly in the place of Aries. And I'll show you some pictures on this. The first thing we need to understand is the spring equinox. It's when the day and the night are exactly the same length and it usually happens around March 20th or 21st. We also call the time after that Aries season, even though the sun isn't actually in Aries. That's just how we define it. Right now it seems like the sun is in Pisces during Aries season. That's why we call it the age of Pisces. But the constellations are slowly moving out of position year by year. As the constellations move more and more, the constellation Aquarius will take the place of Aries during Aries season. Then we'll call it the age of Aquarius. So the truth is, none of the constellations have been in their proper place since the time of Jesus, when everything was placed in its proper order. That's something to consider and ponder on. Okay, another thing that's been going around that has quite a bit of buzz is the red heifer prophecy people are calling it, but there was a red heifer sacrifice that happened in ancient Israel. The history behind that is, is they would bring a red heifer to the door of the tabernacle and they would sprinkle its blood like seven times and once again seven is saturn and given that connection saturn is about the sabbath rest retraction taking away etc yet the red heifer is a replica of taurus which is the zodiac constellation of the bull or cow taurus is a symbol of land the possessions of the earth and abundance the ancient ritual of the sacrifice of the red heifer was a symbol of the this conceptual star alignment of Saturn and Taurus, which was a prophecy for the alignment of stars at Jesus' birth, which we will cover in our next episode. Yet this symbolism of the Saturn and Taurus, or the red heifer connection, seems to also be a theme of Israel losing their land over and over throughout history, which is the meaning of this alignment. Yet right now, Jupiter is aligned in Taurus, which is the opposite of Saturn. Jupiter can represent the expansion of cows or land, and it so happens that they have been able to find red heifers without blemishes in Texas, and have been able to send those to Israel. This hasn't happened for a long time. So right now there is this alignment in the heavens, Jupiter and Taurus showing this theme. But it seems unrelated to the eclipse, outside of the fact that both alignments are happening at the same exact time. Where people are uneasy about this prophecy is apparently the Israelis are planning on doing a sacrifice on the Temple Mount. 
and the concern is that it's very near opposing religious centers of worship. People are hyping this to mean that the Jews will displace the other religion's holy places soon to build their own temple, and they make this sacrifice of the cow to mean that. It may relate, but it's kind of indirect in regards to the symbolism of the red heifer or the Taurus constellation. Okay, I owe you guys a prediction. And that prediction is, the rapture does not happen in the next few months. The stars just aren't in our favor on this one. If anything, they show we have all been left behind. What I'm referring to as Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces represents the heavenly realms. And Saturn is usually known for taking away, not giving. And it's Saturn that is aligned in Pisces. Sorry about that. If anything, Pisces is a representation of 30, or one could say a half hour. Saturn can represent silence. Thus, the biblical prophecy of a half hour of silence in heaven is more fitting for the theme of stars in which we now reside under. The next question we have been getting is, why didn't we include the eclipse that happened in October 2023, which made the Aleph Hebrew character across the United States? A few reasons. One, it was an annular solar eclipse, not a total solar eclipse, like the ones in 2017 and 2024. Reason number two, it felt weird emphasizing it when everyone else made a big deal about the X, which was Tav in the earliest form of Hebrew, but then we picked out the version of Aleph from Middle Hebrew. It felt inconsistent. Number three, do we see any meaning by the Aleph? Yes, certainly. The annular eclipse in October of 2023 happened with the sun and the moon aligning in the constellation Libra, which has to do with partners and companionship. It was right after that eclipse that Israel, arguably a companion nation to the United States, was attacked and went to war. It should be considered that an annular eclipse, also known as a ring of fire eclipse, is a clear symbol of the ring planet Saturn which is also referred to as the Black Sun. The Saturn theme, in connection with this Libra alignment, is a metaphor for the destruction of the Companion. So we feel like the meaning of the October Eclipse stood on its own and didn't relate to the other eclipses as much. Not that it wasn't significant. Next question. The intersection of the eclipses, which forms an X-shape, is located in the vicinity of the New Madrid fault line. Are you aware that this could indicate an imminent earthquake? Why was this not mentioned in your previous video? Number one reason, it's more speculative than we are comfortable with. Number two, it spreads an excessive amount of fear and we take the perspective that the earth is a living being and that the way natural disasters work are more like a person swatting a fly off their body. It's more of a reaction to a pest. And our last point is that we actually are open to the idea that an earthquake could happen. Our current planet placements are actually in favor of earthquakes happening, given that Jupiter is in Taurus, which expands the Earth, and the destroying angel Saturn is in Pisces, which represents destruction from the angels. And with these two planets and these placements, we had the large destructive Turkey earthquake already. But let us be clear, we aren't asking for an earthquake. The last thing that has added buzz to this eclipse is the Devil's Comet which is visible not too far away from the sun and the moon during the eclipse. Do you think it's significant? Yeah, sure, but we may give a little less meaning to its name than the others do. Note that it's referred to as the Devil's Comet because it has horns, or at least the comet appears to have horns. Have you noticed the symbolism in that? It's visually in the constellation of Aries, the ram, but when you divide up the zodiac into equal parts, it's actually in... Taurus the bull. And guess what? Taurus is a horned animal, just like the comet. And get this, there's talk about sacrificing the red heifer around this time. Do you think this is just a mere coincidence?